The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Tangent Egg Podcast. I'm Seth, and as always with me is John Doe and Swoosh. Hello. Hello. And uh, we're going to start this week out with the... Oh, oh, just such tragic news that Mark Zuckerberg has lost I, a shitload of money. Uh, how, so how are we ever going to cope? I, I don't know. Like, how are we going to get through this, truly? It's a horrible tragedy. <laughs> like, it's a oh, sad day. He's, he's lost more money than, like, a lot of countries' GDP. Mm. Like, yeah. $100 billion? That's more than a lot of countries make in several years. It is disgusting that a single person can have a hundred billion dollars as not their entire, but part of their personal fortune. Yeah, to be able to lose that amount of money and still be a billionaire. uh, That's fucking fucking ridiculous. I think he's still 23rd in the world or some shit like that. Being anywhere in the top 100 is probably terrifying. Like, holy shit. uh, I I think if you're on that list... The higher up on that list you are, there should be a bigger bounty on your head. Yeah. It's like winning the fucking lotto. Pretty much. It's like, sure, you can have that fucking money, but there are going to be people after that fucking bounty. There's like, a target on that, that way. One. That way you'll keep that fucking, that list rolling over yeah. a little bit. You'd keep that money in circulation as opposed to sitting in a fucking bank. Yeah. Or being used to create this fucking garbage pile that is meta. Oh, uh, God, that uh, fucking I, meta. I just like the fact, like, yeah, in a few months, you'll get to have legs. Isn't that great? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? You all still look like me's. Except <laughs> that was still kind of a lie, because all of the stuff they used for the announcement was fake. Was mocap, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so none of it was in-engine, in-fucking anything. <laughs> yeah, basically, anything he does, is, I'm guaranteeing, is fake with meta. He is pushing that shit hard, well, and I'm... I think, dying. I think he's trying to push that like they pushed the first iPhone. Like, it didn't work at all. It it had ran a couple of basic features, but didn't actually function as a phone. Yeah. I think they're trying to do that. So you can do all of this before you can do fucking anything. They're promising the like, world. Was, oh, no, it's just in beta. It's just in beta. Well, I mean, the problem is, though, is, like, at least when the iPhone came out, like, smartphones weren't big yet. Like, no. BlackBerry was doing some stuff, but, like, and I, this is like the only time I'm going to praise Apple. The the conglomeration of all the things that made the iPhone the iPhone really was a bit of a game changer. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, it it kicked off the the smartphone society we yeah. have now, pretty much. Like that was the the turning point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Facebook. This whole fucking oh, Meta. Sorry, not Facebook. This whole fucking thing is just a whole pile of dog shit. Like. Oh, it is. He's basically just so, making VR chat and like trying to make it and fancy. Except VR chat is better. Oh yeah, with customizable avatars, full body. Yeah, and it's free. Yeah. He's trying to make he's trying to make uh, PlayStation Home. Like uh, PlayStation Home did that fucking years ago, and you didn't need a fucking VR headset, and yeah. it yeah. failed horribly. It, it, it's so but, stupid. But a part of why it's failing is that because he wants it to be as big as it is where whole countries like companies countries fucking people buy into it he wants to make a massive fucking walled garden so everything yeah. that happens in there effectively meta would own that data like it's a fucking marketer's dream like oh yeah they it's can know everything about you and part of it is they want to sell more hardware so they can have more fucking sensors in your home so they can know more about you like it's fucking Everything. terrifying. There are a bunch of corporations who are almost like stalkers it, at this point. Like, what are you doing now? I must see. Yeah. You, you should be able to realize that you're doing something wrong when you're the villain plot from Westworld. Yeah. yeah fucking oath. <laughs> uh, the whole point of Westworld was a giant data harvest, and it was considered a bad thing in the show. Why the fuck can you look at it and go, yes, that's what we should be doing. That's how we'd be good. So we just need uh, to do what, like to corporations what we did to like Nazis uh, essentially in any movie ever they're the bad guy and we're slowly doing that like slowly becoming <laughs> any time this yeah. movie corporations like <laughs> even the media turned against you, you guys and if it's fun. not corporations it's capitalism yeah <laughs> which is capitalism 
Um, uh, I recently listened to a, an audio book series, uh, Stray Cat Strut. It's like a, a, a cyberpunk lit RPG kind of book. Yeah. And between chapters, they have like a, a little blurb of like something like a little bit of world building. So whether it's a, they read out an ad or it's a little news broadcast or whatever it is. Mm. And one of them is the terms and conditions of a social media contract from this universe. And the last line of it is uh, uh, upon agreeing to this uh, contract you'll receive a monthly stipend uh, for the data of your data we sell yeah Which at least they give it back with. like <laughs> I was about to say like I feel like that's a proper agreement would, <laughs> more people would be okay with it if we actually got the fucking money yeah if, well, if like websites out there selling now, you can my sell shit came back to me <laughs> I mean those things where like you fill in quizzes and shit have been around mm. for ages and they're just data harvests yeah yeah that's all like everyone's like oh no it's Facebook has turned into this like no Facebook was always this there was nothing but quizzes on Facebook when we first started yeah, yeah. like Facebook has always been just a data harvest that's all it's ever fucking been it's just gotten more blatant about it oh and yeah I'm, and I'm really happy the person behind it has taken a, a even if it's a minor shot a shot to the face but... well it's a pretty sizable <laughs> shot mm. the problem is it hasn't stopped yeah like no. it's not like this happened and then the Zuck is like, all right, this sucks too much. We're just going to stall. Mm. No. It, he's still like, sinking oh, money into it. He's he, yeah. doubling he down wants on to, it. He wants to make fucking Ready Player One for the fucking... For the business and fucking worldwide Yeah, no, he wants universe. to do what the like, villain in the book did wanted to do, basically. Yeah. yeah. Just own everything. Like, it's just, but, you yeah. know, the VR headsets are still prohibitively expensive, require a solid gaming rig to run, mm. and your fucking metaverse thing runs like trash. But he does realize he has to, at some point, try to hide the fact he's a Bond villain, right? Like, he looks like a lizard person vaguely attempting to be human half hey, the time. Hey, man, that is an insult to lizard people. <laughs> that is true, but, you know... Still. They at least have shiny scales. Actually, no, he's uh, more of a matte plastic. I No, he's more of a mole person. Like, did you see... Nah, that's I, why he's I always, like, it... staring directly at the light. Like, oh, my God. They made amazing. a model of... They made a model of him in Madame Tussauds, like a wax model, and the wax model looks more human than he does. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the joke of him being a robot's there for a fucking reason. Yeah, oh, fucking no. Uh, yeah. I, I, honestly, we just need, like, the other billionaires to take hits like this now. Like, be great. Fucking oath. Like, Elon's just bought Twitter and... That, that could be a massive fucking fail, so at least there's 44 well, billion out I love that. what... There's a, a fun thing that, like, people have been doing, which is, like, a lot of people are like, oh, you've got to, like, boycott Twitter and all this kind of stuff. Mm. It's like, look, that might work, but it's probably not gonna. Yeah. What you really need to do is, while you're on Twitter, you need to block companies. Yeah. Because then you can't see their ads. Mm. And there are already a bunch of companies since Elon's taken over that are like, eh, we're not really feeling Twitter anymore. Yeah. Maybe we're yeah. going to pull Hidden out. where it hurts in the fucking wallet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Feel free to keep using, keep browsing. Just block every corporation you see. Yeah. And it won't get funding. And they'll yeah. all pull out and It'll be you'll great. fuck him. And now we work out how to stiff over fucking Amazon. Oh no, we're going to find Bezos strung up in an Amazon warehouse one day. I swear to God, that's going to be the cause of the workers' revolt. There's no, going just, to be like a mini civil war against corporations one day, and it'll be just, led by Amazon workers. Just put him on one of his rockets to go to outer space, and oh no, launch failure. Oh shit, it blew up on the pad. Oh, I'm guaranteeing no. that's why he's building <laughs> rockets. It's like, I have to get out of here. If they ever actually see or catch me. Like... Oh. oh, he'll get he'll get crucified and danced around the fucking warehouse. Yeah, and nothing people of value will be People throwing their bags of poop at him. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing of value would be lost. It's... Fuck it. Uh, well, uh, moving on from that... Moving on from our raging anger at corporations. <laughs> well, corporations let's, let's, and let, billionaires. <laughs> let's yeah. move on to a group who decided to stick to their guns, which I think is really cool. Fair. Um... Sorry to all the people who live in Japan who were looking forward to this game, but the Callisto Protocol has been banned in Japan. Specifically for excessive violence relating to dismemberment. I mean... And not enough tentacles. Yes, that. <laughs> there, there'd be a DLC or a mod for that within days. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. Essentially, the weird thing is, like, you look into Japan's backgrounds, like, that's a lot of dismemberment. That's pop calling kettle black a bit. <laughs> again, not, we're not there's not enough spray. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, given that what the the traditional suicide method for the samurai was to cut yourself and then someone cuts your head off. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's disemboweling. That's different. No, it's a beheading. Oh, that's right. You no, disembowel that's... yourself and then you're beheaded. Yeah, so, yeah. You, your second makes it a swift death once you're confirmed as you're gonna die. Ah, fair. I mean, that's good. But, but the company behind the Callisto Protocol got this back from Japan and was like, no, we have a vision for our game and we are sticking to it. We are not compromising for Japan. Nice. Fucking good. I, I love this game developers just being like, no. Yep. We're not Play. fucking with that shit. Despite the fact they live in the company that's made more than one... Uh, live in the company. Live in the country. It's pretty much a company caused... at this fucking point. Oh, I, we all studied game design. <laughs> we know for a fact people live at the company. <laughs> um, but we live in a country that has made more than one game change and shit. I love it when game developers are like, no, I have an idea of what I was making and I made it and I made it. Yeah. Which yeah. is great. And I'm, I'm genuinely surprised that it got fucked over there. But it mm. made it through here. But that's because like, we now have that 18 plus category. We had to fight for that yeah, fucking but, rating, though. But even that 18 plus category, they still fucking banned some games for oh, yeah. stupid fucking reasons. In so, Australia, it's mostly uh, drug use or, um, or heavy sexual content. Drug yeah. names. Just make him rename shit yeah, from yeah. fucking... I mean, like, you, really? if you, you do as much cares? jet as you want, but don't do a fucking syringe of morphine. Exactly. <laughs> don't use actual medicine. <laughs> oh. Look, I think that actually helped Fallout. Actually yeah. having, like, oh, yeah, universe it, it names, put, not just morphine. Yeah, well, it put it into fucking... Put it into fucking more news headlines anyway, saying, this mm. game is banned, everyone wants it. Why? They need to change one thing. Here, here's the game. Oh, I want to play this game now. Yeah. I'll just mod it's it that, back to how it originally was. Hey. Yeah, it's that forbidden fruit thing. I don't see yeah. why they keep trying. If It's Australia. If kids are going to be exposed to drug use, it's going to be out in the street because there's plenty of it at the moment. Well, when, when it's cheaper to buy weed than fucking cigarettes, yeah, it's going to fucking happen. Yeah. So, like, it, I still just, we just don't want to remind people that's a thing because then they'll know we're failing. It's like, guys, leave it. It's fine. Just people people already know you're failing. <laughs> like, I just like the things of think of the children. It's like, that's why we make an R18. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's why you should have a fucking R18 rating. That's why, as a parent, you should look at the fucking ratings on the games yeah. you buy your kids. Yeah. Do not and, buy and your children give a fuck. Like, things. Like, it's. Every time it's, like, it's M15. There's a thing for that. Can you not give it to three year olds, please? Well, you're I ruining remember, my I worked, at, I worked at Game before they fucking collapsed. And yeah. there was a kid came in, tried to buy a fucking uh, GTA 5, fucking however long ago that was. And the mother's standing there, oh, yeah, we'll buy this one for you. And the kid's like fucking eight years old. And like, I couldn't help myself. I told them, I like, you know, this game has got all of this kind of shit. I spelled it all out for her. And she just looked at the kid. <laughs> and went, no. And oh my God, did I get fucking dirty looks from that kid. It's like, fuck uh, you, kid. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been the most satisfying thing ever. <laughs> oh, fuck, so I'm jealous I of that. To do moment. that. I had so many of those moments and I loved every one of them. Oh, uh, so good. Screwing over the... children for games they shouldn't play. <laughs> yeah. Stay away from the hobby that you're going to keep ruining for us. Like, when you're older, you can play that. That's fine. But for now, you're... stay off my Halo. You're the reason I have to listen to 12 year olds when I play COD. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> Although I'm sure all the 12 year olds are having fun this week because, you know, Modern Warfare 2 is out. Yeah. Mm. Um, I haven't even looked at that. I'm, I'm not. I'm no, I don't play the multiplayer of COD games. I just play the single player. And since the company is uninterested in just giving me that one piece of content, I'm not paying 105 bucks for a couple of hours of quality first person uh, shooter. I've got $100, $109 it. for the stand, like for just yeah. the base game. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's but it's COD. Yeah. Yeah. And but in their mind, you get three things now because you get. The single player campaign, all of the multiplayer, and whatever the new version of Warzone. Warzone. No, Warzone I honestly, 2.0. For, I honestly didn't think they had a single player in this one. I'm just waiting for one of those <coughs> no, things do. go fucking. And, just, and they did one edition of the COD where they had no single player. One of the worst selling CODs they ever did. Fair. Yeah, and the the campaign was pretty much a pre order fucking bonus. Like you got to play the campaign yeah. two weeks early, so. No, like that's a six to eight hour campaign if you really yeah. fucking stretch it out. Yeah. So no one was buying it just for the fucking campaign. No. Like 
I'd, I'd be happy in this one if I could play it and not have to install fucking Warzone. That just annoys the shit out of me. Yeah. Mm. Like, if I can play the campaign and then uninstall the campaign and it can never fucking install Warzone, if I could just have the multiplayer to jump on, shoot some people oh. every now and again and be fucking done with it, I'd be happy. What is it, 138 gig for the new Modern Warfare 2 to yeah. install? Ugh. Like, the, the last uh, Modern Warfare you had to install Warzone because it actually had all the multiplayer maps on the Warzone map. Yeah. So you had to have that installed to be able to play any multiplayer. And that just pissed me off because I fucking hate Warzone. Like, mm. it shouldn't be required, really. <clears throat> no. I would still wish they'd be like, you know what, we'll charge you, I don't know, 50 bucks. Here's your single player. Just buy the single yeah. player. Yeah. I would probably do that. Fucking oath. I would give it a shot then. I think the only problem is they'd realize how many people don't give a shit about their game and just bought the single player who wanted the single player. Mm. Yeah. But they, they were saying they were actually looking at, or oh, there was a, an article I was reading, they wanted to do a a campaign DLC next year instead of releasing another COD game, which they're going to release another COD game anyway. It's just yeah. going to fucking happen. Well, aren't they waiting the two years this time? They're giving it a longer cook time? Oh, they say a lot of fucking things. I believe yeah, that I when I fucking see it. But, or it'll be a fucking $109 DLC. <laughs> and it's just right. a Modern Warfare 2 DLC. It's a whole new fucking game. At the same time, I actually would <clears throat> respect them a little bit for just sacking up and realizing they're just making a minor alteration to their own fucking yeah. product. Yeah. But they'll never. Now, do if that. only we can get FIFA to do that. Oh, fuck. I don't think FIFA's actually had a new game. I think it's just slapped a different number on the last 10. Yeah. Um, I said FIFA, but my brain was actually thinking Madden, but, you know, they're all Both. kind of the same. It's the exact same fucking thing. Yeah. Just one keeps the ball at their feet, one puts it in the hands. And all they, it's the exact same game, just a slightly better rendering engine. That's it. Yeah. Other than that, if it's identical. That. Yeah, if that. <laughs> and uh, a better fucking uh, Ultimate Team fucking buy our bloody loot boxes shit. Ah, uh, yeah. fucking yes. And there was a big thing where, like, a bunch of people were like, we need to, like, boycott because this because uh, this year's was the, the honorific for, for John Madden and yeah. people hated it and they were like we should boycott the, the, the or don't boycott the game just the ultimate packs because unfortunately a few too many of these fucking Twitch guys have all built their YouTube and Twitch around playing B, uh, you know Madden or FIFA yeah. or whatever yeah. um, and then it never happened shock horror yeah. it was never going to happen all it needs is a couple of whales just to burn that fucking cash and oh, yeah that's it. And then the, and there's these guys who've made a, an entire career out of I play fucking Madden, which means I have to go play tournaments, which means I have to have a competitive team, which means I have to open packs. Yeah. And like there was a there's still a whole fucking section on uh, on Twitch for D- Diablo Immortal of people still playing that. Why? Like it's not Just... high up, but it's still fucking there of God, several man. hundred people watching Diablo Immortal. I mean, Fuck that's really that. the only way to really play Diablo Immortal. Yeah, I'd yeah. rather have watch a it. bank account big enough for that shit. <laughs> yeah, watch one of the five whales who spent all of that money to actually have a decent character. When they can finally get into games, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they did eventually re- refund that guy, didn't they? they yeah, him. they did. Yeah, yeah, they nerfed his character a little bit. He like should him. have just been an end boss. Like he was the end of the raid. Yeah. Like legitimately, that should been be great. the goal. Like. like you want to raid what? against things? Fine. Make a dungeon. Here's here's the assets and everything you need. Yeah. Fucking protect Just against once, it. Once your character is over a certain level, you now don't run that like you don't run against the dungeon. You are the dungeon and they have yeah. to run against you. Like that that'd be the best said, PvP. At this point, like a little bit of me is annoyed that Blizzard back down. It's mm. like this dude fucked himself so hard by paying to win yeah. Yeah. that he paid to win himself out of the game. Yeah. Play yeah. stupid games, win stupid prizes. Like you should have. Like, no, you spent your money, dickhead. You caused this. Yeah. Fuck yeah. you. This is Wait your till everyone now. catches up. Yeah. Yeah. Just play by yourself in your little corner. Mm. Wait for someone else to win the lotto and dump. Yeah. Wait for someone else to win the lotto and dump it in the fucking stupid game. Really, uh. the only reason that I'm happy they did nerf that guy back down is because he was fucking over his entire guild. Hmm. And the other people who decided they wanted to play that game don't deserve to be fucked over by this one dude. That is true. Anyone who, who decides to play that fucking game deserves to be fucked over. Yeah. 
Look, I, to some degree I agree with you, but people will play what they're going to play. I can't stop them. If they want to play, then go play your game. I don't think it's worth it. I think I, it's stupid. I but, think play whatever game you want to play, but at least make an informed decision. Not have it fucking hidden behind shit. Mm. Yeah. But then that's the thing. Like, a lot of the people who were just in his guild weren't that stressed about that stuff. They weren't dumping piles of cash. They just got fucked over because their guild leader could no longer enter them in in contests. Yeah. Which, is, Which isn't fair to them. That's why yeah. I'm okay with him getting nerfed. Cool. That's a simple fix. Leave the fucking guild. Yeah. Start another one. Well, actually, it's an even simpler fix if he just swaps roles with someone else within the, the thing. So Couldn't do it. The they tried that. Oh, fun. Because of his level and the way it was set up, it was impossible for someone else to take over the guild and allow the guild to do their, their activities. He had to be the one to do it. So unless they were willing to ditch the entire guild and everything they'd worked up to that point, uh, for the guild rankings and the whatnot, he had to either get nerfed or they had to start it all over again. Jesus fucking <laughs> Christ. And because it's all based, like, per character, he couldn't even just start a new character and go back in that way. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Fuck, so, it's yeah. legit. It was a perfect confluence of, like, fucked. Yeah. <laughs> How can shit go wrong? Worse? Worse? Here we go! But I mean, that's just Blizzard's games right now. It seems like every time I open up a fucking news site, it's like one more thing that's fucked about fucking anything they're putting out right now. Of course, right now, it's everything that's wrong with Overwatch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that is an absolute dumpster fire. So, it is funny to watch it burn. Yeah. But, but like, at the same time, there are people who... I don't know how because it's not my thing but are enjoying playing it and it's mm. like I don't I feel bad for them but like this game clearly doesn't want to exist it yeah. wants to die I swear triple A studios are just getting extremely lazy at this point and just coasting on whatever name they built yeah so like, they, are, they absolutely are it's like you actually That's... need to put effort into work for fuck's sake I was reading an article about people who were bitching about uh, Overwatch 2 not because the game is bad but because it came out just before fucking uh, the latest COD came out, everyone who wanted to play COD thought, oh, fuck, we'll go play this in the meantime. Yeah. Mm. And they were playing objective games without actually playing any objectives, just going straight for kills. Yep. So no one was on the objective to move the cart forward or no one was <laughs> taking a point. And it's like, just go away, COD kids. Just fuck off. And the other like, oh, is, well. Everyone was trying to be the first one to locked in 76. Yeah, yeah. And they get seventy, and then they fucking disable Bastion, and so a lot of people fucking dropped off there. They mm. disabled him for a week. It's like I'm sure there was a character there. No, just no. play someone else. Fucking <laughs> hell! Uh, but like, even like then, the Twitch snipers from uh, from COD just coming in on the free weekends when it used to be paid for, and it's the whole yeah. thing was like, ah, oh, bust in and just start. Everyone's head explodes within seconds. Like, how do you do this? What <laughs> magic are you doing? And it's just, these guys have been playing COD for like 20 fucking years and just gotten really good sniping things. Oh, look, man, the way, like, if you watch, like, like actual esports people play, you know, COD or mm. uh, uh, Counter-Strike or anything like that, the way they can, like, spot an eighth of a pixel and yeah. immediately headshot it, it's like, what is this fucking sorcery? Yeah. Yeah. It's terrifying. Uh, all we need is an AI to study, like, CSGO fucking streams. And we're in a lot of fucking trouble. Yeah. <laughs> There's the next step of Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's waiting for. The aimbot has to be better. There's just some I mean, AI in the background could come on. I mean, uh, what is it? Uh, captures. If you see a capture looking for buses a lot, that's someone training an AI how to look at buses. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's amazing. That's our, anti a <laughs> our anti AI measure is training AI. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Damn it's, it. how capture it's how they make money off of that system, is oh. they sell that data where you, as a thinking human, can identify a bus from a boat. Mm. And they sell that to an AI company as, like, here's data on these two images so you can train AIs with it. The, the amount of ones that I've seen that are, pick the traffic light. They're the ones yeah. that I want the fucking thing to learn. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so, for fucking Tesla, it needs, pick the child in the middle of the fucking street. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen a lot of them that are, like, pick the crosswalk. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. So, That's there's fun. always, the, like, 
that corner of a fucking square that's just got that yeah. little bit of crossroad. And we're meant to include that? Oh, yes, no, oh, fuck I yeah, I hate when there. that happens. It's like that <laughs> fraction of a thing. It's like, if I don't want to have to do this again. And then, you, of course, you don't do it. And then you go through it's like one time. It fucking wants it. It's like, why? But, that's because that, sometimes, but, earlier in the uh, process, uh, look, this is based on some stuff I read a while ago. Earlier in the process, it's more forgiving. Hmm. As it gets later and it's got more data, it starts going, well, more people consistently include this, so we're going to actually say that you should include it. Yeah. Just, so, all those ones are words like, and let me type them. All the ones that are like, pick the bicycle out, like, but I want you to hit a fucking cyclist. Fuck cyclists. I'm going to pick <laughs> everything else. Everything else is a fucking cyclist. Hit that cunt. <laughs> hit that one. Go for it. When they're two astride in the middle of the fucking road, Hit them when there's a fucking bike lane right fucking there or a separate road for the mm. fucking cyclists and they're in the middle of my fucking road. Hit them. <laughs> no, I wanted to hit those fucking scooters. Those goddamn electric scooters that annoy the shit ah. out of Like, honestly, I miss the days I could walk down the road without having to check over my shoulder like I'm changing fucking lanes. A Okay, it's not the scooters I hate, the fuck with on them. But still, it's... Why are you doing 40 on a footpath? Like, Actually... There's a, a whole heap of uh, it's just a prank bro things on TikTok at the moment of people throwing handfuls of gravel in front of those fucking scooters. <laughs> so they Jesus fucking Christ. lock the wheel up and yeah, because those things fucking move. Oh, they do. But, like they were meant to be speed limited, but they never put the limiter on, so it slows you back down once you reach that speed. But you so can going downhill gives it, back speed. Yeah, or you can import ones that don't have those fucking limiters, or you yeah. can go through and just cut the limiter out of the fucking line of it. So yeah, there's, there's three e-scooter places around my building, like three oh, separate stores that sell them. Like, it's well, weird. In Victoria, it's legal to buy them, but you can only drive them on your own private property. They're illegal to drive <laughs> in the street. God damn! Can we get that in Queensland? Yeah. So uh, there was an article I was reading. A bloke, um, uh, his family, they had two vehicles, and they thought, "Fuck, we're going to save some cash. We're going to sell a vehicle." And I don't work too far away, so I'm just going to buy an e-scooter. I ride it down to the bus stop, catch the bus to work, and then use that. And he got pulled over and fucking ticketed, and the e-scooter was confiscated because it's illegal to drive them on the road or on the footpath. Amazing. See, but, like, I don't have as much a problem with them on roads. No. Um, I, it's still bullshit, and it, but in cities, traffic's at least slow. Yeah, so well, it, they, they should be only ridden in fucking bike lanes. Like they should be on a fucking footpath. I completely agree. Yeah, but, but I it's rode the one around. That's my problem. I rode one around Brisbane. Like I came to fucking Brecky with this, yeah. and I had a fucking mm-hmm. hell of a time with that thing because I don't have them oh, where I'm at. I'm not gonna lie, you looked hilarious, just like oh. big cheat shit eating grin, <laughs> having the time of your life for this fucking. I, had, I was in fucking heaven. It was fucking brilliant dodging around. But I stuck to the fucking bike lane and like people were looking at me. He's like, well, I'm not going to run you cunts over. You're not going to hear me coming. And I'm like over a hundred kilos. I will yeah. destroy you if I fucking hit you. That's I will come in like happen. a fucking wrecking ball. Just Though, though, trying to get one of those fucking things up a hill with me on top of it. That does yeah. not fucking happen. <laughs> I would yeah. walk up that hill quicker than that fucking thing and drag me up it. So oh, yeah. sitting like trying to push my way up a hill on a motorized <laughs> fucking scooter is the funniest fucking thing and I was wrecked by the end of it it was fucking hilarious like, but, I understand motorized bikes and everything like the e-bikes they're fine because you know they've got some decent heft to them at least but the scooters I've tried them and like I'm just in constant fear of falling off the fucker every five seconds but the the e-bikes they were meant to be limited in that you still had to pedal they meant to be yeah. pedal assisted not just battery run because mm. then they're technically a motorcycle and you have to have a motorcycle license to run they're just yeah. a, an electric motorcycle pretty so, much well depending yeah. on how fast it goes and what it's um, the CC uh, of it yeah, yeah it depends like you can still do them on a car license yeah or well, you can up to a certain I think it's under 100 cc I think you can run them on a car license because yeah. I know when I first got my car license I was thinking about getting it because it would be cheaper to get one of those than to get a car and then I got a great deal on a car so. yeah yeah oh. um yeah, and I know that there's like like there's a limit that you a can gray run. area. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I don't know. That's fuck our scooters, old man moment. Fuck cyclists, they annoy me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's our old man but moment for the not, week. Like, not just, all, 
just those lycra clad fuckwits that have to yeah. ride to a side in the middle of fucking road and you're meant to give them an, a meter clear away on the side and they're across the entire fucking thing like, God, I, 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 I admit there are great people with those scooters as well, but I've had too many experiences in the valley where I've had to dodge out of the way of some drunken idiot on one of them, mm-hmm. but I can't help but hate them. Look, as far as cyclists are concerned, I don't mind one guy. Hell, I don't even mind the, the two riding abreast. Mm. My problem, because the, the two abreast can usually identify when the traffic's not in their favor and get out the fucking way. Yeah. My problem is when they start moving in herds. Yeah. <sighs> when you get stuck behind a herd of cyclists... Because they will knock it out of the way, and you ca- basically to get around them, you have to go into the opposite fucking lane. It's just yeah. Now I have to dodge traffic, so stop. We're on a sixty road, and we're doing ten because you guys yeah. are all out of shape. Hmm. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, uh, nothing better than sitting behind a mob of out of uh, unfit fucking cyclists just uh, lycra asses just in your face just there it is like, like I like God the fact they're trying to lose damn. weight because I won't hold anyone against that but at the same oh, no, time no, no. get out of the fucking way <laughs> like, alright everyone wind your fucking windows up there is a fucking stinker coming like, <laughs> it's worse than driving past a fucking cattle truck like oh, Jesus that's uh-huh. sweaty ass right there Jesus Christ alright moving on <laughs> um <laughs> Look, look, we're getting dangerously close to like advocating for actual <laughs> Vicoli or homicide here, so I think we need to move on. Probably. Um, we don't advocate any of that, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Xbox has put out some interesting uh, numbers, which I think illustrate a weird dichotomy that happens in a lot of things when they're analyzing whether or not something's a success. Currently, Game Pass occupies 15% of Microsoft's gaming revenue. It sounds pretty good for a program that just asks for 20 bucks a month. Yeah. But they, on the other hand, they've been like, this thing missed our sales goal. <laughs> and the thing that I think is dumb about that is they wanted 200% growth on PC and they got 170. They were 170, got fucking yeah. 170% growth. They got three quarters bad. of the way to the goal. And it's like, what the fuck, guys? Why are you complaining? <laughs> that's fucking amazing. <laughs> And they still had 25% growth on console. Mm. Like, that's still fucking growth. Like, that's still a quarter more than what you had fucking last quarter. Like, that's still a hell of a fucking effort. That it's is not a, a fucking we- failure. That's that's fucking Square Enix looking at going, Tomb Raider's a failure. It sold all this money in Game of the Year, but it's a failure. Fuck off. Yeah, uh, what was it? Uh, they, they It was critically acclaimed. <laughs> fans loved it. It picked up a Game of the Year award, but it didn't sell 200 million copies, so it was considered a failure. I just feel bad just for the, the guys who, who work on those kinds of projects. Oh, yeah. And then it's like, oh, this was a failure. Like, fuck you, no. Can we, you imagine the office well. party, like, the office party, they're like, it's game of the year. Like, all of these awards, holy fuck, people mm. fucking love our game. And then corporate comes down and is like, you're all shit. No, yeah. it's fucking horrible. It's a failure. So, like, but all the people, they like it. No, no, failure. Go away. Mm. No, nah, didn't make us all the money we wanted. Almost got there, <laughs> but not quite. You're a Western developer. We're going to sell you off. <laughs> <laughs> Which has been hilarious because the, like, I read an article where Square Enix has been like, uh, yeah, so Japan's not enough revenue for us to keep going. I, I love that whole thing. We don't need you filthy Westerners. Oh, fuck. We needed the filthy Westerners. <laughs> Who'd have thought a small island would be able to keep that uh, fucking worldwide industry afloat? Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, as much as I'm sure Asian developers hate it, the West is a big ass market. We buy Fucking a lot of shit. Is. Yeah, exploit like, us, please. It it's the opposite of like the Western market going. We need to sell shit to China. They've got a lot of money. Like, well, the rest of the world's got a lot of money too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, localize your shit, and we'll probably buy it. We're yeah, like that, pretty much. A little bit, but especially uh, for big companies like Square. <laughs> yeah. But Xbox has also come out and said they may have to raise their prices of consoles and Game Pass. They yeah. said, but we're not going to do it before the holidays. So, yeah, you get one more cheap Christmas and then you're fucked. <laughs> well, there's the thing. Then we as take as it all. <laughs> as far as I can see, they haven't said how much they're going to increase either. No, they haven't. Yeah. And the PS5 um, jumped by 50 bucks in everywhere mm. except America. So, yeah. Which I still maintain bucks, is a dick move when the Americans aren't at least... The, involved in a price hike it's like you know what fuck everyone else like fuck you 
Uh, particularly yeah. on the console already being very pricey, hard to find. So mm. you kind of got to like, if you really want this console, you've got to buy it when you see it. Yeah. Not, yeah. oh, wait until my next paycheck or some shit. And, like, and they're that, like, charge 50 bucks more on that shit. What? That's yeah. one of the major points in like this fucking uh, purchasing Activision Blizzard is that like it's not hurting PlayStation enough that they can't just increase the price of their console pretty much everywhere in the world. Like, yeah. Now they now they're saying that oh we might have to do that as well. It's like well, fuck that sort of takes away a little bit from your argument. Yeah. I mean, look, I the the Sony thing is just so fucking stupid. Oh no, they're gonna have a monopoly and they'll have exclusives. And you mean your entire fucking business model since you yeah. started the company? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna like, do back to you what before. you've been doing to everyone. Hmm. Pretty much, is it? but is those you can't use those dirty tricks. They're our dirty tricks. Like, go <laughs> you yourself. can't go through our barrel. It's our barrel. That's what we <laughs> uh, it's just so hilarious watching them whinge and and bitch. It, yeah. it's it's dumb. Just played out dumb. I, I think operation, and you would have done this if if you'd been the one sitting there with the Activision deal on the table, you'd have been like, fuck you, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's our thing. Like, we've already got a deal with them. Like, we could get, we could do all the stuff. We don't have a Game Pass, we can sell it. Like, fuck I think off. we're looking towards a, oh, there's going to be a big switch up of the AAAs very soon, where, because we have so many indies on the up and coming, uh, oh, yeah. and it's doing well, and things are smashing through, at some point, someone will get big enough to just say you know no we're not going to be bought out by this person we're going to keep mm. going with our shit and build and build and build and hopefully swap out these uh, these fuckwits with something better I, quite honestly and I feel weird saying this because I do play a lot of these games hmm. I kind of feel like the AAA industry just needs to die yeah yeah it's so big and so bloated that it's not like it can produce some amazing things do not get me wrong. Yeah. Um, you look at some of the gameplay from Modern Warfare 2. The game looks gorgeous. It plays mm -hmm. smooth. It sounds amazing. It's like there's some top tier tech has gone into that game. Yeah. But I don't think it's worth it anymore. The, no. The, the it's arms not worth race that gone, process. They haven't innovated the, in years. The arms no. race has gone so far to the end where the price per game to make is insane yeah and we're yeah. not getting anything back from it that i think matches then you drop down to just even double a and you start getting innovation clever ideas niche titles mm. with a good level of polish on them a little more yeah. risk um, by trying new things i mean oh, one yeah. of the ones i always point to is uh hellblade senua sacrifice mm. that was an entire game where they spent months researching with with people with um audible hallucinations to get that effect correct for the game and then yeah. specifically set up rigs and designed acting performances from the audio cast to create that effect yeah and you couldn't have done that in a triple a game no it was much. too niche to do in a game with that higher budget on the other hand you drop down to double a now you can yeah there's not as big a fucking risk on it so we're not burning like hundreds of millions of dollars this but maybe doing 10 million dollars on this like take a little bit more yeah. of a risk yeah yeah i can play with things without fear of you know big corporate daddy coming down and smacking the shit out of them mm. yeah and then you drop down if you're willing to drop down even more to just a grade games now you're getting into like one man projects where mm. it's like the vision is super clear you know what the game is you yeah. know what you're going to get at the other end right. hell look at stardew valley that was one dude doing absolutely everything yeah. yeah, and it's literally an amazing game. The guy has just made something magical. It took the gaming community by storm. Well, well it, it sort of helped rebirth like, yeah. the genre. Like it sort yeah. of helped yeah. pick up that the, whole. Like, sure, you've had uh, uh, not Animal Crossing, uh, Harvest Moon, Harvest Moon, Harvest Moon, Moon that there. Like, yeah. sure, that game's been out like for a long fucking time, but. Stardew really brought those fucking genre games out to a whole yeah. new fucking audience. Like, that made it massive. Yeah. Well, I th and we're I seeing more of that, them now. I yeah. The thing that really fucking happened Earth. with that is, and I don't know, I don't want to say it was, but I don't remember it being as much of a thing before Stardew, was the 
um, farm and a dungeon in one game. Yeah, or farm, dungeon, and uh, like social interaction. So it's not just like yeah. not just farm, not just dungeon, but you also have to make people in the town like you. you actually, have to interact with the world around yeah. you. It's not just I'm going to farm and sell mm. shit, or I'm just going to dungeon. Yeah, I remember dog. when I was a I remember when I was young, I used to. I, I have absolutely no idea why I got really addicted to Harvest Moon. Same, but I figured out that the optimal play was to do all your farming all day and only hit on the bar girl because the bar girl's bar is open at night. So you never mm. wasted any of your daylight hours trying to court a girl. You just went to the bar at night. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but that was like that shit. It, it basically <laughs> just broke the game's romance system. Whereas something like Stardew, where you actually have to like go to people at certain times and take them to do stuff, and it, like you have to factor it in, it's actually part of the game. Uh, yeah, give them it, gifts and know what they're like, and yeah, it added a lot more to it. And yeah, it's a great refinement of the idea. I right. think that's why in the last uh, Nintendo Direct, it was just like, and six farming games are coming out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm actually but, really hoping that I can reopen Stardew Valley soon and play that again. It's been so fucking long, and there's been so many improvements. Right. And all of those farming games on the Nintendo thing, it was just like flavors of Tim Tam. It's all the same biscuit, but here's your coconut, here's your pineapple, yeah. here's your caramel, here's your... Mm. Right. Same thing, just a different yeah, edge. I don't yeah. think that's a fucking Find bad thing. works for you. Yeah. No. Variety is best. Oh, yeah. Fucking oath. So, shall we move on to a little bit more uh, gaming stuff that's finally uh, kind of concluded at last? Yeah, <laughs> a bit of gaming news that actually has an end point. Like, bang, this is the end, yeah. it's done. So, this was the the saga of the Bayonetta voice actor, if you didn't know. Um, so, basically what happened is we had a new voice actor for the... Um, for Bayonetta in Bayonetta 3. Uh, it's uh, Jennifer Hale, who did the voice of Femshep from Mass Effect. And it's still a Nintendo exclusive, isn't it, that game? Yes, it is. That's annoying, because uh, I, mean, I enjoyed Nin the first look, one, but yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, Nintendo's the one who saved that franchise from being destroyed altogether, so... Yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, they all. get to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we had a new voice actor, and people were like, oh, that's a bit weird, why don't we have the original one, um, Helen Taylor? So, she came out and went, oh, I didn't come back because they only offered me $4,000 to voice the character. At which point, a lot of people got a little, that, that's a bit weird, like, it's a reasonably popular game franchise. Hmm. That's, a, that's not that much money for a main character. A little after that, we found out from someone else, like, the, the sag Afras, the big group in the states who handles uh voice acting yeah um although to be fair helen taylor is from england um and he, they were like look 250 an hour is pretty good for a voice actor so at that price they're looking like four or five sessions she's actually in the ballpark for what most voice actors get paid mm. so a lot of people started getting a little like eh, that's a bit weird then but it's still low we, we'd still yeah we'd like to champion see she should definitely get more for being the, the third time around voicing the character. Hmm. And then Jason Schreier of Bloomberg and two other publications got confirmation that no, it wasn't 4,000, it was closer to 15 for five recording sessions. And that she, when she turned that down, she was offered 4,000 for a cameo. At which point, kind of everyone looked back at her like you know hey like is this legit yeah because if so that's a bit fucked and then she did come out and say that yeah they did offer me ten thousand dollars i didn't think that was good enough and i wrote the creator and he said that he according to him i was worth another five grand on top of that so yeah it would have been 15 grand but i didn't think that was enough so i said no and then they offered me that four grand for a cameo. Yeah. Like, uh, that just has been a weird clusterfuck. So, oh, it's not done. Oh, God, no. Why does it keep going? But at, at 15 grand, they said, what, four or five sessions going through. That's almost yeah. four grand a session. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty fucking amazing. 
Well, like, I mean, this is one of the things I always pointed out. You're bitching about pay to people like us. Yeah. Like, we're the gaming community. I don't make a thousand bucks in a week. Yeah. I work over 40 hours a week. So, you don't come pitching to me about getting 15 grand for 20 hours of work. That's pretty amazing. Fucking oath. I would murder for that. I wouldn't make 15 grand if I worked 15 weeks. I think that's like, what's really turned people against her at this point. It's like, no. No, fuck you. Oh, no, no. The thing that's turned people against her is this last two things. So, <laughs> she put out a tweet... Basically, because she's been asking people to boycott the game so that they wouldn't to, to protest her getting paid so little. Uh, she's still on that bandwagon, but she said that she had two things that got said. One, she implied that all of the journalists are in the pocket of the big gaming companies, and that's why they're shitting on her. <laughs> Do wow. you understand who Jason Schreier is and how much the gaming uh, development sphere fucking hates him? Yeah. Do you really think he's in that pocket of big gaming? And if he is, man, he has done an amazing job at pissing everybody off. <laughs> and number two, she suggested that instead of buying the game, people should donate to charities. And she put up a link with 14 charities that people could donate to. She's a chairman one of, in one of which... them? What? Is she a chairman in one of them? No, but it's still stupid. So, th this is why I, the fact that she's in England is important. One of the charities she selected that people should donate to hmm. is in Kentucky. Only operates in Kentucky. Only does billboards. And they're anti-abortion billboards. Wow. Uh, that's okay. all they do. That just... Okay. That's a very Why? fucking niche charity. Yeah. yeah. That, and yeah. Anyone, anyone that can't hear the air quotes in charity... Needs to fucking grow some ears, because God fucking damn, that is not <laughs> fucking hell. Like, so this is where this whole thing is terminated at her suggesting that people should donate to an anti-abortion group who make billboards in Kentucky. So she is just insane, then. Like that's all this is. She's just mental. I don't know, man. Like it, it's fucking, it's bizarre. It's, it's should, honestly bizarre. That gaming company should now, like, go to Kentucky buy a fuckload of billboards and put Bayonetta up on them that say fuck <laughs> yeah just buy them abortion's out. available <laughs> <laughs> free abortion with every copy <laughs> it, it, it it's it's insane like she's burnt her career oh yeah like oh yeah I, she'll never she'll never be a voiceover actor she again. chose the right. strangest hill to die on but she's going but down like, with that if shit, she'd fuck. actually come out and just been like they offered me 10 grand then they gave me 15 I don't think that's enough to voice the third iteration of a reasonably popular character. Hmm. You probably still would have gotten enough of the people on board to be like, yeah, she should be paid more. I mean, there'd still and, be a lot of people like us going, fuck you, that's more than we make in a year. Uh, oh, yeah, 100%. But I feel more vindictive about it because she lied. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't actually, br like, I might bring it up in a, like, man, I wish I made that kind of money. I don't make that in a week. Yeah. But I'm bringing it up more in a, like, a fuck you, because, like, you're bitching about it, and you're lying <laughs> about it, and I can't even make that. Yeah. Like, it that's would a have been lofty a much, goal for us. It would that, have been a much softer criticism if she told the truth. And yeah. it would have still ignited the argument she apparently wanted, which was that people need to talk about how much voice actors are paid. Yeah, and it is too low. Even Agreed. fifteen grand is a bit dumb for a third iteration of a reasonably right. popular character, and especially when voice... voice acting can just ruin someone's throat. Like... Mm. Uh, it ruins someone's throat, but it also like that is like the soul of the character for that game yeah. or yeah. TV series or 100%. whatever the fuck it is. Like that's yeah. what like you can turn the thing off and listen to it. Like listen mm. to the fucking audio books a lot. Like the person reading it can either make or break a fucking oh, book absolutely. like it, mm, it can be definitely. an awesome story but if that person reading it's just god damn if that's fucking horrible I'm gonna refund that motherfucker yeah like, it can make or break a fucking book or a character or anything like I mean hell it's one of the reasons I like He Who Fights With Monsters because they got an Australian guy to a voice an Australian guy fucking yes. nice. everything's in the right place it makes sense I love it yeah anytime he says slang, Australian like, words <laughs> 
mm. and can talk shit. <laughs> yeah. He has the ramble, like, speech pattern down. It's like, that's important to us. <laughs> but it's it's the voice actor that's making that so good for me. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. So they definitely need to get paid more, but she's was done the... it completely wrong. No one's talking about voice actors getting paid wrong now. They're yeah. talking about how this one girl lied and then wanted everyone to donate to an anti-abortion billboard it's group. It's yeah. hurt the cause more than anything, which makes me think that she just used that as a shield to try and deflect some of the backlash off or just distract people. I don't think she gives well, two shits. Yeah, but that. even that, that hasn't deflected anything. That hasn't yeah. changed anything. That's, if anything, added fucking fuel to the fire. That's That hasn't smothered it. She's just gotten a fucking cup of petrol gone. Yeah. Oh, I'll put this out. Boom, up it the goes. Worst, the worst thing is, though, like with the whole Joe DiMaggio thing no longer voicing Bender, that hurts his argument now. Like mm. Because everyone wants him in there. And he's pushing... He's always been didn't an advocate he, for better ways. Didn't he get back in? I yeah. think he may They have. caved. They put him back yeah. in, yeah. yeah. After a lot of pressure, they brought him back, which was fucking good. But that just shows, if you change the voice actor of something that's been going for that long, fans will not take it. Yeah. It's like when at one point they threatened to replace Donny, uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. It's like, no. Like... No one will care. You have to come up with another character. Yeah. You can't do yeah. Iron Man again. Iron Man's nah. God. Like, that's done. That was perfectly cast, and now that that character is dead, he no longer has to play it. That's fine. Pretty much any of the MCU characters, like, mm. they're going to be fucking hard to replace. Except, like, War Machine. Hey, yeah. he was easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was, yeah. At least he was second banana. Yeah. yeah. At the time when they replaced him. Like, imagine if they re- they wanted to replace him now, where he's got, you know, main character roles yeah. shit now. Yeah. yeah. They and couldn't a, do a, it. A solo movie and, like, roles in TV sh- Like, he's already well established that. You couldn't do it now. Yeah. yeah. He's ingrained there. And they changed him back when there wasn't an MCU. There was yeah. Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, so, you know. Yeah, well, I know, yeah, some characters are just too ingrained in that character to mm. be anything else, to have anyone else there. Like, yeah. even someone like for John DiMaggio doing Bender's voice, like anyone anyone else who could do Bender's voice, it still wouldn't be the same because, like, of how much he, like, brings that character out. Like, mm. someone else would mm. may have a, a different inflection or have a different take on that character mm. and some people just need to keep doing that fucking role yeah it's like yeah. when Animaniacs got re-released or redone which I love that series is still really good <laughs> they've done well with it but they brought all the original voice actors back which mm, was yeah. great because if they had someone else doing uh, Wacko, Yakko and Dot then I would never have watched it mm. like, no they're in there forever and the guys who do Pinky in the Brain like they are the same guys it's, they don't change it like, yes. I mean, they only had to really get in like four voice actors to do the entire cast of that show. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and they um, were also I, the writers after that. I think one of the, the the best example of that sort of stuff I've seen lately is actually the uh, Chucky TV show. Mm. Not only is it a direct continuation of the Child's Play movies, it they brought back in the original writer, all of the original actors, all of the original voice actors... They're using an actual puppet for Chucky. Mm. Um, like, it, it's all 100% canon follow-on using all of the right people. They didn't scrap anybody. Nice. And if and you're able to that, do that, that's fucking awesome. Like, yeah. often you can't because it, at least one actor may have gone fucking through the roof and they're mm. unable to do that. But if you can, fuck yeah, more power yeah. to them. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the best things they did is they actually did some flashbacks, like for anyone who for somehow missed the Child's Play franchise it's a good it's a dumb set of movies for a dude and what rock have you been under I know right (laughs) yeah Um, but they do some flashbacks to before he was before the first movie and one of the clever things they did is there's a character in the show who is possessed by Chucky Um, they actually used that actor who is actually a female Mm. to do all of the flashback sequences as Oh, as non-toy male Chucky as a person huh. so that they could match all of the mannerisms exactly correctly so that That's when she awesome. plays Chucky as Nico Chucky which is who she is later they match up perfectly because the exact same actor played both roles nice. fuck yeah that is awesome 
That was pretty brilliant. I, it's actually a really good show. It's dumb and in all the ways that make <laughs> Child's Play great. Yeah. There's, like, there's, in the newest season, there's a bit where one of the... Ch- like the, Those there's, who don't know, there's actually more than one Chucky doll now. Um, but they have one who's capable of punching a hole through people's chests because it's it, it's super jacked Chucky. <laughs> he can't like he can't wear a shirt because he's got all these pecs and abs out and he's just like, yeah. Nice. So fucking hilarious. It's such a good show. Like I would absolutely recommend people watch that show. But like if you like that franchise, they have 100% tried to keep writers, original creators and voice actors and characters the same. They've done a that great is job. That's awesome. With it. That's nice. very fucking cool. God, we're like a little low on steam, but we still got a bit more to go, guys. <laughs> Someone I, vamp, vamp. <laughs> you did want to talk about D and D things? Oh yes, uh, I'll use the last little bit to talk about the D and D thing I did over the weekend. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine uh, was running this. He wanted to run this big D and D thing for Halloween, and mm. he'd been playing this for ages, and he'd be showing off some of it every now and then to me, like little like prop things and stuff he was planning. Yeah. Um, and of course this past weekend I went and played uh, we were playing a game called Mothership which is a survival horror game for space settings uh, and it was uh, it was very much of a like aliens via the thing sort nice. of game <clears throat> but the, the guy running it had set up like he had 3D printed helmets and little pieces of armor and stuff to represent us wearing like hard space suits nice um and the the thing being like if you weren't wearing the the armor pieces you weren't wearing them in the game so you didn't get the armor boost that's pretty so nice uh, to do that nice. uh, when he gave us all that gear he handed it all out in this big box and went like if you can't carry it on your person you don't have it with you so we had to figure out how we were going to carry all this gear nice <laughs> um like i got the the big plasma cutter which mm. was just it, it's just a nerf gun but it was fun as a prop yeah um and later on, we got a gun, and I was like, "All right, I'll hold on to the gun because I've got the best combat skills." But now I've got to figure out how to to carry it. I just whipped out duct tape yeah. and just made a fucking sling out of it so I could st- stick it over my arm. And the DM was like, "Yes, that's exactly what I was hoping you'd do." Nice. Um, oh, uh, the the plasma cutter because we had little torches. We taped one to the barrel of the plasma cutter so I could like move it around with a torch on it. DM was fucking oh. love it. We were getting really into it. Nice. Um, he'd actually coded up and 3D printed an old style computer. Hmm. Uh, he even got custom uh, mechanical keys so it had that nice clicky noise oh, cool. when you clicky. were using it. Nice. And he ripped, he got a whole bunch of sound effects of like old like <laughs> <laughs> nice. noises for like a, ri- a big old computer so that when it was loading it would make those noises when we were interacting with it because uh, any time we wanted to interact with the computer you didn't talk to the GM you actually interacted with the computer that's pretty awesome I love that idea that is very very fucking awesome fuck yeah, yeah. it was the, the thing that, that sticks out to me the most though there was a sequence where we had to uh, essentially reset the computer yeah and it was like it, we punched in the commands and went okay we're gonna start it and then it starts like just putting out these like just lines of text saying it's doing stuff and we're just sort of waiting for it to finish and then slowly one by one all of the lights in the the house turn off he'd synced it all to the computer ah uh, oh and then nice. he's got, he, oh, that's brilliant. he had two smoke machines yeah. set up in the in the room so he absolutely billows the whole room full of smoke and then he turns on like a one of those yellow spinning lights for an alarm <laughs> and starts playing an alarm. Nice. At which point he start like we're starting to get a little on edge because like the the set the scene is starting to feel like it's, there's something important's happening. Mm. And he of course starts narrating that like ah see like the aliens coming to get you now. Um, I swear to God, like the thing you gotta understand is like I am dressed in shitty like 3D printed fake armor with a fake uh, helmet on holding a nerf gun and in this exact moment I am so dialed in because of the environment and the setup from the DM that I am looking at the cloud of smoke where he's suggesting that the aliens coming from and in my head it was 100% sure that whatever comes out of that smoke I'm going to kill it with this gun <laughs> brilliant 
I was Fuck that yeah. dialed in for it. Despite the fact oh. that, one, I'm holding a fucking Nerf gun. It's not going to do jack shit. And, of course, nothing's coming out of the smoke. It's just the story and the environment he wanted to set up to make the story feel better. Oh. That's but I was, DMing done right. Holy yeah, I was fuck. 100% ready to shoot anything that came out of that smoke and believe it was going to die. See, that's why I like the idea of, like, if you bring D&D into augmented reality spaces, like, not full VR, just augmented yeah. reality, um, and just, you have two rooms or something, you make it as a business or whatever else or a place to go, and just a bunch of random shaped props, just generic, so you can layer them over on... Uh, with mm. augmented reality there's a switch between them so you have one guy setting up the next scene in the other room that'd be fun I mean like uh, Microsoft did it actually with HoloLens when they were doing oh, their yeah. um, their uh, Halo experience mm. because they'd have all like characters and stuff and like maps appearing in a room but really the room was just an empty space with a pedestal yeah um, but it was cool like I, I, I just wanted to talk about it because like this one moment of complete absurdity and I was so dialed in; it was insane. That sounds um, fucking that amazing. Sounds amazing, yeah. It, it it was a game that was like three quarters role. Like, actually, I'd probably say it was like half role play, half LARP. Yeah. But it was like the perfect mix. I was I had so much fun. Um, he's planning to do another one in maybe like six months, mm. and I'm going to be pretty keen. To it's going to take him that long just out. to print the props. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, he got he he got this entire game together in about three months. Nice. Nice. Very good. And like, he's just bought a better 3D printer so that yeah. he can do better props. Nice. That is but, really fucking cool. I would love that kind of setup as well. Like, just as a dedicated games room. Just smoke machines and integrated lighting so you can play with it and that kind of stuff. That'd be amazing. Like, but what would have been funny experience. as fuck is if they'd had a kid or a dog or something and had them dressed up as, like, <laughs> an apartment to release them to fucking come into the room at that point. Oh, I'd have lost my shit. Yeah, I absolutely like, would have lost like just, my shit. Just to have something to run through that fucking smoke and then have not given you any fucking bullets. Yeah. <laughs> like, even if it had been, like, it had moved outward of the mm. smoke, just to have something move through it at yeah. all. Even if it was, like, a cutout, just a, just something to give it that little yeah, bit of extra. Just, just yeah. pull a string just so it moves the fucking smoke or something. And, yeah, yeah. that would have... Just that twitch but, of movement to set your... Ah. I, I'm not kidding. I was 100% sure something was going to come out of the smoke. Oh, that was, is fucking gold. That is I, I don't really know how to describe DMing. it so that you understand that yeah. I was that in uh, the moment. Just that, immersed in it. Being in the moment, that's what fucking tabletop gaming is all about. Like mm. whether, it, whether that whole scene is in your head or whether you're sitting there around a oh. table of people that are all fucking like, holy fuck, this is what we're on. When like, everyone just that takes that... Focus, yeah. Yeah. When that the whole table takes that breath in while someone's rolling that one dice that yeah. like win or lose the game. Yeah. Oh, that's that's peak. We've had oh, some of those. I... We've had some good rolls, I think, like that in previous games. But holy shit, I haven't had that experience in a while. Like that sounds well, that amazing like, as fuck. Like, <laughs> that, that'd be there. an amazing feeling, like being that DM and like sitting back and looking at everyone at that table, like holy oh, fuck, they are in this, this. like. The satisfaction that's a DM you get dream, as a DM right? For that fucking there, oh, yeah. that's why I want that whole integration system built into a room. Like, fuck, you guys are fun. Bro. Hey, man, next time he's doing one, you got to come along, dude. Definitely. Uh, I mean, uh, like, if you're in town, Dan. Oh uh, well, if who knows what fucking next year holds? I I may be I know, a lot closer yeah. than you think. <laughs> um, he's in the walls. <laughs> <laughs> Ceiling. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won't well, fit in those then. fucking narrow ass walls. <laughs> well, that's put us out past an hour. So there we go. We made it, guys. <laughs> we crossed the <laughs> finish <laughs> line. Uh, all right. Have a good one, people. Bye. See ya.